Good afternoon. It's been a while since I've filmed anything. It's been really busy at work. So I did that little bit of filming with my mom from my mom's, which is nice. Um, I'm just on having a day off today. So it was booked in. And so I'm just getting a little bit frazzled. I just need to just stop for a few days and pick up next week. So I'm looking forward to my little break. Um, I'd also got booked in this morning for my COVID jab because obviously I care for my mum so uh, to make sure that I'm not going to give her anything by me as well. I've had my flu jab already but I woke up full of a cold <laughs> so day off and yeah just not done much today because I've been full of a cold. Um, so I do have some people that will take some of my apples which I was kind of going to do this afternoon but I'm just yeah I just decided to rest instead. So we still have so many apples. Well, said there are more, but I'm keeping some for us as well. Um, but I said I'll try and over the weekend get these dropped off. There's, there's three lots of people that would like some, so hopefully we can get those shifted. Uh, I'm just about to take a little uh, walk up one of the local lanes, and I thought I'd take you with me because I don't think we've done this before. Uh, you may have done it with Neil, but not with me, I'm not sure. And if I get a chance, if we get far enough, there are some properly old ancient ancient oak trees as well. That, I thought that might be interesting to show you if we get that far, but we'll see. And there's usually some horses around and see how the brook's doing after all the rain that we've had and things like that. Anyway, so that, that's my general plan. I'm just going to scoot off shortly. So it's a couple of hours before it's dark. Um, I'll just go and get some fresh air and I'm going to do a little bit more filming this evening but we'll talk about that later. Bye for now. It's not as windy as Lincolnshire but it's still pretty breezy over here. For my selfish way the park is lovely and quiet because the weather's a bit rubbish but that suits me. So this is the park where we used to bring our kids and the dogs for many years. Um, irrational stuff so because when she comes back and um there's now a somewhat bit tired and old area with play equipment uh, does the job a little bit worse for wear don't get high slides anymore but, but yeah so it'll be sad if that high slide ever goes um yes yeah, so uh it always gets pretty boggy in this park it used to be part of an old farmhouse uh, many years ago before the housing estate was built and all the rest of it. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, I have put um, somebody's planted these lovely. Um, sorry, I'm very tired. But anyway, these lovely flowers in there, which will come back to me in a minute. Uh, I had actually put in some wild strawberries in there. I'm hoping they'll be moved to the other plants. So there's some alpine strawberries I've grown from seed. Um, yeah, so me and my park group got this notice board put in, got the bench, got the seeds and all some trees scattered around, so that was all us. And in the spring there were bulls planted around the edge of the perimeter that um, uh, spring flowering bulbs and things. Oh, you! It's all good, it's all good. Yeah, so that's the uh, the alpine strawberry. My friend sue has been busy. So the park group isn't active anymore, but there's a small amount of money left. So um, Sue and the other friend Sarah are going to pop in some flowers and things. Lots of money. Yeah, so uh, we spent many hours here and a uh, whole long story about the goalpost there. I can't remember if we've done that story on camera, but it's quite a sad one. Um, I might save that for another time if people want to hear about it. Maybe comment if you do want to hear about it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I did have a last request actually for a bit of help with something, but. I'd say I can only do what I can do. I mean, I, I really push this 
you know, I'll, I'll add on this for many, many years and nobody wanted to take over. And at a certain point, you can only do what you can do. Um, so, uh, Idea, actually. Yeah, it's had a rather uh, sad loss of life in the park. It was a few years ago now, it was a very tragic story. So I managed to reinstate the, um, the memorial plaque, so I'm pleased about that. Um, yeah, that cherry tree in front of us, that, uh, that Died from some very harsh weather when these were first planted, but I'm glad they replanted that as well. Yeah. So, so part of the logic of planting the trees was uh, the ground gets very, very soggy underfoot, especially in the winter. Days like this, weeks like this. Uh, so if there were more trees, it would obviously over time as they grow, it would help pull up some of the moisture out of the ground, so it's not quite so sodden. So obviously when the kids play football, uh, what tends to happen is obviously the ground around where they're playing tends to get worn away. So after much, much hard work and grafting and fundraising and all sorts, but then these current goalposts can actually be moved. So there's actually three socket positions. So if it gets worn in one area, they can be moved to a different position. Slightly bizarrely, probably because it used to be a farm. There's still, uh, it's actually, uh, I believe, um, sewage pipe works that run underneath as well. So, not really a lot we can do about that. Anyway. Yeah, so there's a, um, so there's a walnut, black walnut at the end, then the cherry, then the oak. So that's an American type oak with red leaves. That's a hornbeam on the other side. This is a pin oak. Then there's a rowan. Alder. I think there was a couple of service trees in this lot. Lime tree. Lime tree is my favourite tree. Do you like lime? Yeah, we're still in the Um Yes, yeah, so there's a lime tree. I think it's a service tree at the end. I'm not entirely sure what these are, anyway. But they're doing well, anyway. So. Yeah, this, this alder tree, it likes to be wet, and obviously the ground's wet now, but we had a couple of very, very dry years when it first went in, so we did lose the very top. So I actually chopped off the dead bit. Might need to take it back a little bit more. But it's starting to branch from the bottom now anyway, so it's doing okay. And this is the dog field. So apparently in modern times it's somehow not really a thing to have a dog field, but it's very useful. So it's just if there's obviously nervous children or even nervous people, you can get the dog in there and it can have a good run around uh, without needing to be on the lead. Um, and again, there didn't used to be a proper bin, but we've uh, got a proper bin in there now. And there still isn't a proper bench, but somebody's left a, an old tree stump as a sort of bench. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Anybody that's worked with local councils to try and get stuff done in parks will probably appreciate how challenging that is. Councils out there, you really shouldn't make it so bad. I'm trying to encourage people to do a bit for local community. Yeah, they really need proper support and not barriers being put in the way. So that's Wellfield Lane Park. I'm just leaving the park. It's a gorgeous um, wild rose that so just keeps springing up year after year. Again, council keeps trying to hack it back and kill it, but it still has some eyes and manages to come back. But, um, isn't that pretty? So nice. And then there's um, allotments just next door there as well. But the only time I tried to have an allotment, didn't have enough, didn't have enough time to work on it, and I got thrown off after not very long at all, which I was very sad about. So this is quite interesting. Um, 
I'm actually going to go right, but I just looked to my left and I want to show you something. So, uh, two things. So, this is Timperley Brook. And um, as you can probably gather, uh, a brook tends to be running through the low point, low point in land. So all of this was agricultural land. And the area to my right, none of that was ever built on because it's protected the local floodplain. And uh, so we've got all this open space, grass trees, etc., which will absorb the water and reduce the risk of flooding where there's actual housing. And Not at all uncommonly, um, we get a lot of rain, like we had overnight. The water accumulates, that's one spot, on the same line of the land, wealthy lane where the park was, if it had gone on down the other side, it's highly likely that's flooded as well. It'll be very interesting to see how it is behind Ash Farm, I'm going to take you next. And this is Ash Farm. Fashioned duck ponds, probably a public footpath still, traditional hedgerow. Bear in mind, this is probably a 10 minute walk from our house, so you're literally going from suburban, I suppose, to rural, which is just such a pleasure and a privilege on one hand. But because most of the time we've lived here, I work in the centre of Manchester, a long, hard, tough commute, other responsibilities. Hardly ever get here, it's just so sad. And, uh, so, we're probably, so we're going to get a bit further down. All this open space. Um, I think it's a bit sad, obviously. When Neil is, I was near then, obviously, but when Neil as a kid used to come down here exploring, it is a public footpath and everything. And, uh, there's a little woodland on the other side, quite near where we live. Kids now hardly ever come out. So it's not, it's the parents as well, you know, just the culture was always too dangerous to go out, don't go out. And then the <laughs> sad irony, obviously, all the dangers online that they face. Love life. But anyway, um, so you can see over there, but there's a, it's getting more and more boggy. I'm not sure how far I can get down without getting should be boggy wellies, really. Anyway, um, let's see how far we get. And then further down, there are horses, there are stables here, there are horses further down. Um, I'm saying stables, but they're, I'm not sure they're still active stables anymore, to be quite truthful. But, um, there's still horses out. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to get around here. And there's literally <laughs> running water up there. Allegedly, there's some water to find out. It's not too bad. Right, um, oh, Robin. There's proper traditional hedgerow, they're like your wild roses and sloes and hawthorn and everything elder, all the things you'd expect in a traditional Cheshire hedgerow. So we're still a little bit above the line of the brook at the moment. And it's already still quite soggy. There's longer term plans, to, not exactly here, but not far from here, to build a lot of housing. I think it's about nearly 2,000 houses, and it's just going to put even more pressure on the land. More likely they'll flood. You know, no houses are needed, but they do need to be in the right places, and not just in the sense of. Unfortunately, these days, right place seems to mean more developers buy green land. Green belt land cheap, and then put pressure on to get planning permission to build housing, and then just make more profit, which is not really, really not how it should be. 
it's increasingly how it is obviously so many people suffering because it's just a total lack of housing all around and extreme shortage of uh, you know what would have been traditional council housing for local workers uh, so many people priced out the areas where they grew up this is um, pretty sad uh, anyway oh gosh that's so strange okay so um, you can see the horses and then there's a a hill of what looks like a hill in the distance it's actually a hill of soil so bizarrely that's something to do with um, this uh, Hale Golf Club own that land and own the land on the other side and they're building some sort of I'm not even sure what the building is, it's meant to be some natural landscape and why they need a big hill I'm not quite sure and then some special kind of golf practice so there was not a hill there before but it's just such the strangest sight there was literally there was not a hill there before and the horses are very curious and uh, so I might have to put my camera away and see how we get on I'm just going to pause for a bit so, I've just spotted this sign, uh, this the development that uh, I was talking about, it's called Places for Everyone. So this is the notice of consultation, this is stuck on a place where barely anybody will see it, but anyway. So this is a consultation period, it's from the 11th of October until the... 6th of December, apparently. Okay. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? So, uh, a couple of things. I'm going to have to head back home because this is not summer anymore. It'll be getting dark in a wee while. I don't want to be too late on the lanes when it's uh, well, yeah, while it's still light. I'm okay. I'm being careful. Uh, you can obviously hope to see behind me just beautiful mature hedgerows and some massive oaks in there so traditionally the oaks would have been kept in because uh, of good timber for building uh, shipbuilding house building all sorts of things uh, my brother rob's been doing a project where he lives where if you measure the girth or the circumference around the oak and if it's more than three meters it's considered to be what's called an ancient tree if it's less it would be a mature tree i think i've got that right so in a previous trip out i did measure this one here this is a relatively small one on the lane and that's already uh, i think it's about 2.7 meters good so when i get a mow if i ever get a mow i'm going to try and measure one of the really big ones a bit further up because i don't well i don't know sure about um we're not very good in this country at um preserving our ancient trees which are so much part of our history and heritage as much as buildings and so on and obviously it's been in the news recently with the tragic loss of sycamore gap and how much that sycamore tree meant to people and you know we saw it neil and i saw it ourselves it's absolutely stunning it's such a sad loss we well, completely know for those that don't know the area this long straight path here uh, this was originally uh, part of something called Brooks Drive, so there's a local um, dignitary gentleman person who had a, a big stately home and they had this uh, drive put in which is obviously lined with trees as well uh, and it's still here and it's still very much used uh, local right of way. Uh, yeah, anyway, so I'm going to wrap up here for now and to get myself back home safely and not necessarily with dry feet because I've realised I'm going to have to go through that massive puddle uh, to get myself home <laughs> unless it goes slightly different way but that's going to be even longer anyway decisions decisions I'm going to stop rambling and get myself home so that was pretty challenging because I've got stuck into some of the rush hour traffic now so I was super careful just pulled in right off the road every time cars are coming so I made it quite slow but Overall, I've been going about two hours now and done a loop of the boundary of where all this housing, if it goes ahead, will happen. So we've got um, on the other side of the road there some of the original cottages. Clearly it was all farmland. Um, the part to my right, I think, was still going to be somewhat protected. 
but all the land has just walked up must be good at least 15 maybe 20 minutes I know I was having to stop a bit but all of that you can see will be developed all the black green in the distance right over and just basically join up with Alchingham and just make it more of an urban sprawl and yeah so back home safe I have to say I really enjoyed that I've just not been get out getting out nearly enough in the fresh air so that was really nice despite the rainy weather in fact in some ways because there was just nobody about it was just just myself and the rain and the the environment and everything it was uh, really nice and I guess just I say just that feeling like if plans do go ahead it will just never be the same again so it's kind of nice to have a little record of, of how it is now as well um whatever comes next so uh, I hope you enjoyed that a little walk around this area and tour and everything and um Bye for now. Speak soon.